The Ukrainian military has shot down another Russian Su-34 fighter bomber. It was the second in a day and the tenth in recent times, according to Ukrainian Air Force Commander Mykola Olshchuk. We destroyed another Su-34. The direction is the same. The goal is the same, he writes, the general notes that with such losses of combat and special aviation, the Russians should think about it and at least for a while stop air meat assaults. Well, we will continue to work. Until victory, Olshchuk adds. I in recent days, the Ukrainian armed forces have downed 10 Russian aircraft, including this one. Just on the morning of February 27, it became known that the same Russian plane was destroyed a day earlier, on February 26. On February 23, defense forces reported that a Russian A 50 aircraft had been shot down over the Sea of Azov. This is the second A 50 that the Ukrainian armed forces have downed since the beginning of Russia's full scale war against Ukraine. On February 21, a Su-34 was shot down. In addition, on February 19, the Ukrainian armed forces shot down two more Russian aircraft in the east. According to Ukrainian armed forces commander-in-chief Oleksandr Sersky, these aircraft were carrying out anti-aircraft missile strikes on Ukrainian positions. On February 18, the Ukrainian armed forces destroyed a Russian Su-34 fighter bomber in the east. On February 17, it became known that the Ukrainian Air Force had destroyed three Russian aircraft, two Su-34 fighter bombers and a Su-35 fighter. They were also shot down on the Eastern Front. Since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the Ukrainian armed forces have shot down 340 Russian aircraft. Russian oligarchs may want to bail out Donald Trump. Amid Donald Trump's growing debt among his legal cases, Russian oligarchs may want to bail out the former president, according to U.S. national security lawyer Mary McCord. Newsweek reports about this. It is noted that in an interview with MSNBC, McCord, who previously served as acting assistant attorney general for national security at the Department of Justice, was asked by host Simone Sanders Townsend if Trump's financial exposure poses a national security risk. Yes, we are talking about how difficult it might be for him to post this near half a billion dollar bond, but he has certainly plenty of people who might want to bail him out on that. Some of those might be foreign, some of those might be Russian oligarchs, some of those might be people right here in the US, McCord said. McCord added that Trump's fondness of Russian President Vladimir Putin is also cause for concern, saying that there may be other countries that see the possibility of Trump becoming president as a way to earn favors from him. Anytime you are talking about someone who is running for president or holding any elected office and potentially could have some indebtedness or feeling of owing somebody else something, that's very dangerous. Particularly here, as we know his fondness for Putin, his continuing praise of Putin, and the way he governs Russia, and that's something I could very much see people there who have the means to help him out. There's plenty of other countries that would like to get some favors from Donald Trump should he become the president again, she said. North Korea has sent more than 10,000 containers of munitions materials to Russia. North Korea has shipped over 10,000 containers of munitions or munition-related materials to Russia since September, the State Department of the U.S. said, as Moscow strives to replenish its weapons stockpile for use in Ukraine. The department pointed out the arms transactions and the Treasury Department together announced sanctions against more than 500 individuals and entities to ensure accountability for Russia's ongoing war against Ukraine and the death of the Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Since September 2023, North Korea has delivered more than 10,000 containers of munitions or munitions-related materials to Russia, the department said in a fact sheet. In the latest sanctions package, the department designated two additional entities involved in the transfer of munitions from the north to Russia. They are a Russian firm that manages a terminal at Vostochny port in the Russian Far East and a naval facility near Vladivostok. 
The White House has said that in addition to munitions, the North also provided Russia with several dozen ballistic missiles, some of which were fired against Ukraine. Observers have expressed worries that the North's arms support for Russia could contribute to prolonging the war in Ukraine, while what in return Moscow might have given to Pyongyang could further undermine security on the Korean peninsula.